From the heart of the Andes to the windy steppe of Tierra del Fuego, Argentina offers some of the world's most breathtaking fly fishing experiences. This is your ultimate guide to fly fishing Argentina. Vamanos. First question you're probably wondering is why go all the way to Argentina? We've got trout right here in the US. Well, first and foremost, they've got the absolute largest wild, and by wild, I mean unfed rainbow and brown trout. If you haven't heard of Rio Grande or Jurassic Lake, all you need to do is look in the IGFA record books because they're both very well represented. And unlike rivers in Arkansas and canals in New Zealand, the fish in Argentina don't have stock trout or salmon pellets to feed on. The next thing Argentina offers is wildly uncrowded rivers. There are thousands and thousands of miles of water and you're unlikely to see another angler. Think of it like Montana 50 years ago. But I think for me, the most important reason to visit Argentina is the overall experience. You've got friendly, amazing, warm people combined with some of the world's greatest food. And when you combine that with stellar fishing, there's just no better trout fishing destination on earth. I don't care which lodge you're going to in Montana, there's not gonna be an asado or a steak restaurant like Don Julio to go to. Now let's dive into some of the regions you might wanna visit on your trip to Argentina. Starting from north to south, we've got northern Argentina, and that's gonna be largely a golden dorado fishery. No, you don't have to go to Bolivia to catch golden dorado. The biggest fish actually live in Argentina, and it's easy to add a golden dorado trip onto your trout trip. And now we're gonna move southwest into what I like to call northern Patagonia. Here you're gonna find storied rivers like the Chimuin, the Coyuncura, essentially the entire Limay drainage. And in these rivers, you've got smaller walk and wade fisheries all the way up to giant float trips. There's something for everyone in Northern Patagonia. And if you're looking for that quintessential Western style trout experience, this is the place to go. And don't forget that this video is brought to you by Trident Travel, which is our new destination travel service. So if you're looking to book the perfect trip to Argentina, give us a call. Then as we move South to Bariloche, we enter an area that I'll call Southern Patagonia. Southern Patagonia is a lot like Northern Patagonia, but there's a little bit more diversity here. So instead of that traditional yellowish looking Western environment, Southern Patagonia has more of a mix. You've got a combination of that Western feel with more of a lush West slope of the Andes type feel. that's gonna be greener. It's gonna have more of those deep blue rivers and it's gonna have a lot more brook trout if you're looking to target those. And you should, because they get really big and are really fun to catch. Then we're gonna move even further south and talk about Jurassic Lake. Unless you've been living under a box, you've probably seen an Instagram photo with a giant rainbow trout from Jurassic Lake. It has to be the absolute best trophy rainbow trout fishery anywhere on earth. And again, these fish are totally wild. There's no pellets, they are feeding exclusively on the native shrimp and minnow species in the lake. What's more, Jurassic Lake Lodge has absolutely incredible food. So when that wind is blowing 60, you can just head back to the lodge and have an incredible meal with incredible wine. And last but not least is Tierra del Fuego and the other sea run fisheries. And I say the others because not all of the sea run fisheries are actually on the island of Tierra del Fuego. The most famous, of course, is Rio Grande. Rio Grande holds many, many brown trout records and is just an incredible, incredible fishery for those large sea run brown trout. Not many people know this. There's actually a little bit of a king salmon fishery in Rio Grande as well. And just a little bit north of Tierra del Fuego, there's even a steelhead river. So whatever kind of trout fishing you're into, Argentina definitely has it. And while we mentioned this in the regions, let's talk about some of the target species in Argentina. Number one is definitely gonna be the brown trout. And in Argentina, you'll find a variety of sizes of brown trout. In the smaller rivers, you're gonna to tend to find smaller fish. And as those rivers drain into larger drainages, the fish tend to get bigger. In Northern Patagonia, for example, you'll find the biggest fish in the Limay. It's not uncommon to catch 
browns well over 30 inches in that river. But they're not easy to come by, and the Limay is one of the toughest rivers to fish in the entire country. The number two target species is gonna be rainbow trout, and with the exception of Jurassic Lake, where they get absolutely enormous, generally the rainbows are gonna be a less exciting target species than the brown trout, in my opinion. They just don't get quite as big as they do in, say, Alaska. Again, except for Jurassic Lake. The number three target species, which we already talked about a little bit, is gonna be sea run browns. And frankly, in my opinion, the sea run brown fishery is absolutely amazing. And when I go back to Argentina, that's gonna be my absolute first stop. Not only is the size of the fish that you catch in say Rio Grande amazing, but unlike Atlantic salmon fishing, where often there are very few fish in the river, generally, in Rio Grande, you've got great numbers of these sea run browns. And while every cast isn't gonna yield a trophy, it's very likely that you're gonna end up with a half dozen or a dozen fish in a week of fishing. Up next is gonna be two species that are near and dear to my heart, which are brook trout and landlocked salmon. Obviously, here in Maine, we've got great fisheries for both, but I'm sorry to say, they're bigger in Argentina. Brook trout are available throughout Southern Patagonia, and it's an absolutely awesome fishery there. In fact, Yvonne Chouinard made it famous by chasing a possible world record. And yes, there's even landlocked salmon. And landlocked salmon, which were brought to Argentina from our very own Sebago Lake right here in Maine, landlocked salmon are found in the Limay and Traful rivers. So if you've watched this much of the video, you're probably ready to book a trip. And especially if you're booking a trip in Patagonia, you're gonna have essentially two options. One is to book with an outfitter, and the other is to book with a lodge directly. And due to Argentina's vast size, it's not quite as straightforward as booking a trip to Montana. And so the first question you might be asking is, what is an outfitter? Well, an outfitter, just like here in the States, manages guides and books trips. And outfitters often work for lodges managing their guides and clients. Outfitters are also going to give you the option to customize your trip to make sure you have the exact experience that you're looking for. But Argentina offers traditional lodge trips as well, so you can go to a single lodge for a week and stay there and fish the variety of river options. And there's some pros and cons to booking with either an outfitter or a lodge. And first and foremost is the variety of fishing that you're looking for. If you're looking to fish one, maybe two rivers during the entirety of your trip, you're probably better off booking a lodge. Lodges are gonna have the best access to one or two watersheds. On the other hand, if you're looking to experience the greatest variety, that's where we recommend booking an outfitter. With an outfitter, you can fish three, four, five different rivers all within one week. Up next is going to be when to go and the seasons in Argentina and being in the Southern Hemisphere, it's pretty much gonna be the opposite of the calendar we have here. So your fishing is gonna start sometime in November, but that's the time that there's gonna be a lot of runoff in Argentina. And it's generally not the best time to go, though you can see some very spectacular fishing, especially in Tierra del Fuego in November. Then comes December and January, and depending on the fishery that you're going to, the rivers and lakes can really come into their own during this time period. And if I had to pick an absolute best time to go, it's probably gonna be in that December, January window, especially for Patagonia. Then as the season progresses, the fish have seen more flies, they've gotten more pressure, the water's gotten warmer. That's gonna be February and March. And generally speaking, the fishing is going to be tougher during that time. Tough fishing for Argentina is still generally fishing that's much, much easier than what we have here in the States. But needless to say, February, March is gonna be a lot like July and August in Montana. Then as we get through that first half of March and get into April, that's gonna be the start of the fall season in Argentina. And that's when you're gonna see browns and brookies and landlocked salmon starting to spawn. And it can be a really, really productive time to fish. And if you're going to Tierra del Fuego, the winds tend to calm down a little bit and makes that fishing a lot easier and more accessible. The bottom line is, if you're coming from the U.S. and you're looking for a winter getaway, you can pretty much go anytime. But pick those December, January months if you want the absolute primetime fishing. And last but not least, let's talk a little bit about the tackle that you're going to want for Argentina. And it's actually pretty easy. If you're a trout fisherman here in the U.S., you're going to bring all of that same tackle to Argentina. 
with a few exceptions. If you're fishing for those sea runs, you're probably going to want a spay rod, and that's going to be generally a lot like the tackle that you'd use for steelhead, but perhaps a six-piece rod instead of a four-piece rod. And of course, if you're headed to Jurassic Lake, you're going to want nothing less than a seven or an eight weight because those Rambos are absolutely enormous. And one other thing to note is that Argentina is soon going to be banning felt, so depending on when you're watching this video, you might want to think about getting some rubber soles or our favorite, corkers. And we're going to cover gear and flies in more depth in upcoming videos, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm Ben, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.